Shadow of War, Middle Earthen with JV Gwaltney. You played it, saw it. What's the status here? Uh, Andy and I both played it. Oh, wow. I think to play it. Yeah. All the stations were busy. I only saw it. Oh, wait. You only saw it? Only saw it. Ha! I got to play it. I she know. She didn't. I know. Well, so I what, uh, what were That's you That's twice now I've seen it and not played it, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> What what was new? What are they showing off? What stands oh, man. out? All right. So what they showed us, uh, we didn't get to see any of the open world. Uh, we saw the fortress raiding sequences. So you know how in the original game, you go just find more chiefs and attack them. And sometimes they'd be in camps, but sometimes they'd be wandering, you know, Mordor all over the place. Yeah. So the deal with this one is they have fortresses now or keeps or whatever you want to call them. I think the proper term is fortress, you know, is what they call them. But hey, basically, let me double check. Uh, Middle Earth expert, Matt Miller, fortress? Sure, man. Great, yeah. got it. Okay, the uh, one fortress to rule us all. Oh boy, uh, but um, yeah. So with every war chief you take down, you have to sort of. It's not a matter of like sneaking into a camp anymore and just like killing them because sometimes you could do that. Uh, it's like a full on assault. A lot of it looked honestly more like Total War. If you guys have ever played that, like the Total War series, where you send like massive armies at uh against each other or like to storm sort of settlements, and it it. Like you're still playing Shadow of Mordor and it still has all the same moves and the combat, but like you get to do this huge preparation before the assault. Like changing camera perspective, like strategic. No, 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 no. Like, you know, you uh, pick your armies and then you like load them out. So you have like three platoon leaders, you know, your little orc buddies, and you can load them out with like special abilities. So you can give like one of them like the suicide bombers from uh, the Helm's Deep. Remember that one, uh, Yurik, who like storms the gate and Bring explodes. Him down, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you course. can have that. You can have that guy. That's good. Thing. Thank you. You can have like a monster that's walking around with a catapult strapped to its back that can bring <laughs> down a wall. Uh, you can sure. like have various creatures that you can summon during battle like spiders. You can have spiders. You know, you just summon them. Like full Shelob style spiders. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. And then I saw like a bunch of dragons in footage. Yeah, uh, dragons... I think they said that you can, uh, once you get far enough into the game, you can actually have that as an option. But early on, like, you see dragons flying about. Are they the, calling them dragons? I don't know. Like, they said dragons, like, when we were there. I think I'm they sure. said dragons. You can, like, control them, and, like, you fly around, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. dropping, like, fire bombs with them. Yeah, like, but they start out as on, like, the enemy <laughs> side, so you have to, like, do it's Talion's so little thing. If you, played the, <laughs> no, it does. if you played the original game where, like, you know, your bow and arrow lets you, like, zoom towards <laughs> enemies at a certain point, yeah. and you can, like, cut off their heads and stuff right. so in battle you know you upgrade that ability and you can like point your arrow at a dragon and once you've like weakened it enough you can like take control of it it's and just pokemon got it i mean pretty much yeah <laughs> it is basically like having charizard yeah, flying and, around on charizard and he's right there's like there's like point a point b point c kind of thing that you have to go take yeah like that's yeah. how you like move forward in the assault on, on gotcha. the key. yeah it's basically like controlling the points uh, there are three points in the fortress you have to control, and all those points are guarded by the war chief's, you know, minions, sort of his bodyguards. And again, like the original one, they have all their little weaknesses and strengths. So, like, you know, one might be scared of fire. Oh, look, there's a convenient, like, barrel next to him. You shoot it, blows up, he gets really scared and performs worse in battle. These guys are so scared of bees and yeah. the whole uh, thing. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that whole mechanic and feature and stuff is still there. And then after you, like, take over the fortress, you have to go one-on-one -on -one against, like, the big bad war chief. And, of course, like, for some reason, uh, at least in our demo, your buddies can't accompany you. They just stay outside, and they're like, we'll let Talion handle this. It's a Dragon Ball Z fight. Oh, it's yeah, one-on-one. Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, it's not even one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> See, this is where it sucks. Oh. Okay, so you'd think, okay, it's going to be, you know, mono e Yurik, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but it's not, because he has, like, his whole little squadron there, and they constantly regenerate. I killed that squad, like, three times. They kept coming back. There are archers on the balcony in this throne room who are firing down at you. It is a very one-sided fight, and I got my ass handed to me. That man, or that Yurik, beat my head in with a bone. I feel like the regenerating orcs, that kind of nullifies the appeal and thrill of the entire nemesis system. Even in the first game, like, when you would kill somebody, then they would come back. It would just deflate it a little bit much. Like, I just yeah. want, like, consequences to every action. Right, right, right. And just having regenerating fortresses. I mean, some of the some of those bug, some of the bugs associated with that in the first game were hilarious, though. Like, there was one orc, I remember, because I reviewed the game for Pace, and they hadn't patched it yet. And there was one orc that I killed that cut his head off, cut his head clean off, it went flying off a bridge, and that orc kept coming back, but without his head. <laughs> like I'd see him, like he'd just be walking around. I was like, but this is the greatest. The camera thing. still zooms in. I'm like, oh, I remember you, people, Italian. Yeah. People don't realize that was like the the orc wizard. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, yeah, no, I. 
Is it is it lore, I, Miller? <laughs> let's say it is. I mean, we might as well. All right, Miller, please at explain. This point. <laughs> as, uh, uh, it's not worth it. No, man. I really want to know. Like, I remember it's, on the Skyrim cover story trip, Todd Howard's like, everybody loves dragons. No one's ever gonna get sick of dragons. No, it's not that I'm sick of dragons. I like dragons. I just think <laughs> he's a purist on the lore. Uh, <laughs> explain why dragons and calling them dragons is a real issue. I, again, it, this is. Miller, we just talked about weapon slots for 45 minutes. We can talk about dragons for All two. right. So in in Lord of the Rings, it's a little weird that you would be just kind of summoning up some dragons. Because like dragons in Lord of the Rings have a have a weight and a majesty and a power to them that takes them beyond that that scope. Now, now that they, said it's like just saying like there's like a gray wizard just flying around. Yeah, like so just summon that's some just, Gandalfs yeah. over. <laughs> like that's like that, that within is, the Lord. Yeah, now yeah. Uh, because they're all like smog, they're all like noble smog. Well, not things. all of them are, but like it's just kind of weird. But that's okay. I mean, it really is. There's now two rings of power, too. So there, is, there's, I this mean, is like, my point. Let's, let's, there's there's like, multiple steps to this. Let's go build another <laughs> ring of power is such an abs- is so like, sort of absurd within the like any sort of uh, real view of the Lord of the Rings fiction. But the reason I'm saying, I keep saying it's okay, it's okay, don't worry about it, is that like. I, one should not be approaching this game that is about leading orcs as a human through Mordor, like taking down fortresses and stuff like that. I mean, we've already crossed over a threshold of right. like, this is, let's just have some fun with this. Like, these are guys, like, we have some fun homages to the Lords of the Ring, Lord of the Rings fiction, and let's not maybe take it too seriously. Yeah, it's, it's weird because it's always felt like a officially licensed fan fiction. To me, uh, like that's, that's that is I the think, vibe of that work. Like, but Miller, you were so on that first game's cover know. story. You were diving so deep into the Similarillion with those guys. Like, that was the appeal for you. It was, and and I I will say that some of that has been after I played that final game. It was a little lost on me some of that stuff because it felt like they'd gone a little bit off the deep end of like we're just gonna um, do whatever we want um, and not be bound by the fiction. And and again. Not to sound like broken record, that's okay. The the goal for developers should be the, to make the best game they possibly can. Is it just and that they're straddling this kind of middle ground of it's look, it's taking in between it's like yeah. in between Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, but not really. I can't Is believe you didn't say you? Middle Earth. That just yeah. sent, like seemed no, like a... Middle Earth, Middle Ground. <laughs> Is that what bothers you? It's like go all in or go all out? Uh I don't know that it I mean, haven't they already gone all out already? I mean, I, I kind of feel like when you make a second, I mean, at this point, it'd be like the last boss battle is orc ball. You know what I mean? Where they, <laughs> yeah, play, like, you know, I mean, like it's just it's gotten to the point of like it doesn't it doesn't really. I, matter, I think right? it would be fine if the end of this game was like you just kill Sauron, like it doesn't matter. Just inglorious bastards, like, face off. Like <laughs> Fellowship of the Ring just doesn't exist, and like Frodo and the Ring, it doesn't matter. Like let's just you know it'd be cool. Let's just kill Sauron. Like yeah, inglorious bastards. Like kill Hitler. Uh, you know what I mean. It's the it's uh, probably the smartest route they could take. Oh yeah, I mean it would it would be sort of ridiculous and over the top, but it, that would sort of be fine. I mean, I think I bristle a little bit because unlike um, unlike a lot of fictions, there is a sort of for, for people who like Lord of the Rings, there is a kind of like uh, Stephen Colbert would freak out if he saw this game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> There, there's Don't ever show him like, Lord of the Rings online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His head <laughs> explode. There's a sort of sacredness to the Lord of the Rings fiction and and what Tolkien's original intent was and and exploring issues around like the nature of power and um, describing breakfast. Uh, yeah, describing <laughs> breakfast um, and describing trees. I mean, this is a dude who was very contemplative and thoughtful about life in a post World War II world and was using fantasy to explore issues of peace and war and what was good and what was bad and that kind of stuff. And when you have something like Shadow of War where our main character runs around chopping dudes' heads off and stuff, it it feels like it goes a little bit uh, away from that vision maybe. No, I, I can see that. Um, and yeah. that's, again, that's okay. Like that's the game, like that game is certainly a lot more exciting because you're chopping dudes' heads off than it would be if you were a hobbit walking through the forest <laughs> taking some time to observe how pretty the mountains are. And yeah. the, um, and even though that is what makes the novels oftentimes um, really beautiful. They made that hobbit game on GameCube. You can go back and play that. Right, yeah. That like, true experience. Yeah, I feel like that that sort of game has already been addressed within yeah. Lord of the Rings. And like, 
Have you guys seen Last Action Hero with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yes. Like Absolutely. the Hamlet bit? That's yes. what I think about when I think about Shadow of Mordor. <laughs> it's like, sure, this is this is just completely, you know, I, I agree with Miller. It's like thematically against like Lord of the Rings. It, it's sort of, it's very bristly, but at the same time, that doesn't stop it from being entertaining. Like no. just ludicrously no. entertaining. You guys had a good time with it then outside of the regenerating enemies? Oh man, it's, I have, I have issues with it. I think... Because we only got to do one time through, and it's super chaotic. Like the bat, like the battles in the original one, even when you got really good at it, could be complicated because you'd have like twenty orcs around you. This one, it's I think there were like forty around me at one point, and like a town square, and I couldn't tell what was going on, and like I accidentally killed three of my or or yurks because the uh, friendly fire was turned on. Do you think it's just a matter of being thrown into a demo though? And not yeah, yeah, I, that's what I'm hoping. Yeah. But like, also there was input lag, which you know, for a game where the combat is rhythm, like it's straight up, it's that Batman Arkham sort of thing where like. If, if I push a button, Talion needs to react immediately. And if he doesn't and he screws up, that's not on me, but it still like really gets in the way of my experience. And that happened quite a bit. And I talked to some other journalists and like that was happening to them. Like yeah. at the setup and there was some lag. So I'm hoping like final release, it's much more polished, but just the chaos of it. It's, it's so overwhelming. I don't even know really what to think about it. I enjoyed bits of it, but it was stressful. Like it, it was an... It was a stress I was not used to in that kind of game. <laughs> well, I would I would agree. I mean, I think like I've seen I've seen a fortress assault twice now. You know what I mean? I saw one at GDC in the theater, and then I saw this one, and it, it was the same kind of thing of like, oh, there's just a lot going on. I don't know what I'm supposed to be like focusing on. What you know? Because they you know they're playing the game and they've done it a million times. Like, oh well, there's a wall here. I just turn around, and I grab this orc, and I shoot this ball, and it blows up the whole wall. We're doing yeah. good. We're going great. And then like they move forward, and you're like, whoa, I, I okay, all right. You know, like it's very quick and you're not even like playing the main character that much you know what i mean i always felt like he was kind of like like not until the end like you know right. what i mean like you're kind of just fighting you get to lose the guy you either take control of him or kill him and go to the next spot go to the next spot go to the next spot they all happen very quickly very chaotic and i was just like i don't get the the game i guess you know what i mean i get the fortress assault and i get how all those characters in the nemesis system play a role and how once you take it over you know this you put this guy in charge and it changes the world around him mm. though they didn't give us examples of how it changes the world you know in in the in the kind of open world um i mean they seem interesting right. but as i guess as as on their own they don't seem very interested it, it, in me. It was a very unideal sort of environment <laughs> for that session too the, because like like Andy says, we were constantly being propelled and like the people who were demoing it for us were trying to be helpful but at the same time it was like, do this, do this, do this, do this. I'm just like, let me... Let me figure it out, man. Mm -hmm. Let me let me take some time. Yeah, that's the game apparently yeah. at that point. You know what I mean? Like it, it's weird. The, yeah. the more game like the more games fun is reliant on systems, mm -hmm. I think the harder it is for it to demo well. Oh yeah, like Prey? Oh yeah. man. Like like yeah. any any game where you're 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 fundamentally building a web of sort of experience and knowledge that fuels the fun of the subsequent game, mm -hmm. trying to take that out and, and being like, okay, well, you know, it's not the beginning of the game because that's kind of boring. It doesn't really show anything. It's not the end of the game because we don't want to spoil that. This is, we're just kind of somewhere here in the middle and like, here you go. Uh, <laughs> like, that's really that's really hard to do. And I, I feel for, for anybody who's making that kind of game of which, you know, at this point... There's a lot of them. There's a <laughs> lot of, you know, Inter most world, AAA yeah. games are very reliant on complex systems. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's hard these days to make an E3 demo or whatever show demo... Um, that speaks to the strengths of your title when you're you're saying like fundamentally you got a guy for 10 minutes and he's maybe going to be paying attention uh, maybe not i mean he's probably going to be talking to his friend while he's doing it this better be fun though yeah. <laughs> like, what, what do you do with that as a developer yeah, oh and by the way you also need to ship your game in three months I, um i think my biggest concern with this game still is because i enjoyed the combat when it was working still like Mordor's combat has always been satisfying to me in the same way that Batman's combat was because they're basically the same system just yeah. with more gore sure. which I love I love uh, <laughs> chopping heads off it's great um, is I don't know anything about that open world yet and like that was the big bummer about Mordor for me it was like oh yeah like I get it I get why this has to be that way but that doesn't stop it from being uninteresting Yeah. and honestly 
I, I want to see what this open world is actually like. I want to like inhabit it, you know, but yeah, there's they, nothing. They had nothing. a trailer last week kind of showing off just environment fly throughs and it certainly has more variety than I expected in right. the, the look of it. But yeah, activities, I have no idea what it's gonna be like right. out there. Yeah, and it's such a hard thing to do now for like, I feel like so many developers of open world games, like it's such an easy thing to fudge up. And when it does work, it's surprising. Like, I still can't explain why Breath of the Wild's open world works. Like, because most of it's empty. Don't ask Andy about that. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> but, like, it does work for me. Like, it yeah, does. Yeah. There's, like, a sense of discovery around every corner. Any rational, sane human being, it works for him. It works for him hard. Absolutely, JV. Andy, Andy's allowed wow. to have his opinion. <laughs> I didn't say I hated the game. <laughs> I, know. I know. Sorry, you gave us an inch of this podcast. You have to throw you under the bus. But, but you know, it's, it's like that thing, like... If you were to ask me, like, okay, what is an open world? What is what makes a good open world? It's, oh, I, I know it when I see it, you know. So yeah. I, I, I hope. You're a big help with your, I know it when I see it. Yeah. I hope Shadow of War's uh, open world is is good and fascinating, or at least better than Mordor's. But like that's the biggest thing I'm worried about. Thank you so much for watching this excerpt from the Game Former Show podcast. You can subscribe to the audio version and listen to new episodes airing every Thursday. We cover big games on the horizon, games that we've just reviewed. We have long-form developer interviews, a lot of fun stuff. So check it out every Thursday.